In today's episode, CJ McCollum has a collapsed lung and Damian Lord has beef with Woj. Welcome to Lockdown Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblaze reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts. And now also on YouTube, we're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers by New Year's. That's 2,000 subscribers by 2022. Uh, we're up over 1,400 and pushing higher, but we cannot get there without your help. If you are listening to my voice now or watching on YouTube, either hit that subscribe button or go to YouTube and and find the subscribe button and then hit it. Uh, we're trying to grow the sort of community there. So if you are a new listener, old listener who hasn't subscribed, either way, um, join the community. We'd, we'd really we'd really love to have you. I'd love to have you personally. Uh, we've got a big old show today. Today's show is supposed to be a mailbag episode. Uh, we do a mailbag each week answering lists or submitted questions all episode long. But then the Blazers just had a really newsy day. <laughs> so we had a scrap mailbag. Um, Got to be flexible here because uh, the NBA season has a lot of twists and turns. So instead of kind of uh, forcing a mailbag in here, we're just going to talk about the news. And there's a lot, a lot of news to talk about. Um, CJ McCollum is out for an extended period of time, or at least indefinitely. Um, I, I don't know how long the Blazers haven't said, but he has a collapsed lung, an injury he sustained in the fourth quarter of the Blazers game against the Boston Celtics on last Saturday evening. Uh, he left the game uh, with about five minutes left in that game, went straight back to the locker room and did not play in the Blazers' following game, and now has been ruled out and diagnosed with uh, pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung. Uh, he had a CT scan. Basically, CJ was listed as probable to play in uh, uh, to play in the Blazers' game against the Los Angeles Clippers on Monday evening, and he was he didn't warm up for that game. In fact, he was downgraded from probable to doubtful before the tip off, and he knew like, oh, that's not good. Like something's wrong. But at the time, it was a it was. Um, thought of as a rib contusion. It was like, oh, you know, he got hit in the ribs at the end of that game. And he's, um, you know, and he's just, he's, you know, ribs are, they're tender, right? Like you, it's hard to run up and down if you have, um, if you're, if you're hurt there. So I was like, yeah, he's out. Um, and then the, t the team took a CT scan, uh, not clear exactly when that happened, but I would assume like shortly after, I would assume the doubtful ruling and then him eventually being ruled out was him getting that scan and then discovering this pneumothorax of the right lung. Um, I think collapsed lung sounds more scary than it is. Uh, there obviously are like really severe cases where they have to like put a tube into your chest and in like specifically like inflate the lung. But um, from not to brag, but I know people who went to medical school. Um, I, w I went to high school with a couple people who are doctors now. I even went to college with people who are a couple doctors now. That's right. Me, I don't know. I don't know anything about medicine, but I've got friends in uh, various places in the, on the West Coast uh, and, and in North Carolina who um, who are medical doctors. And I it, like it sounds like in very severe cases, um, collapsed lung is bad. But for the most part, like in athletes, it's just when you get hit really hard in the chest, um, hit really hard in the ribs and, and air gets in between your lungs and it causes um, usually typically one one of your lungs um, to deflate. And that's what this is. Uh, just as you know, the Blazers are saying that they'll they'll provide updates as necessary, which is the kind of thing you do if it's, if it's an extended injury. Um, like it's, it's not like a, Hey, we'll talk, talk again soon, but the Blazers play Wednesday night and then they have three days off. So um, I think just like PR wise, it makes more sense to say, we'll up an update will be provided because the Blazers have Thursday, Friday uh, and Saturday off. They have three, you know, three, three full dead days in the schedule to, um to figure out what they want to, you know, evaluate CJC where he's at and then, you know, make an official announcement. So there's, they, they don't need to rush. And it's not like he's, he's only going to miss one game. He's ruled out for that game. He's not going to travel. The Blazers are already in San Francisco as I record this on the evening of December 7th on Tuesday evening. Um, and he's, he's not, he did not travel with the team to San Francisco. They play a one-off road game in on Wednesday night against the Warriors. Um, it's, it's uh, like just looking up, um, 
previous NBA players who have dealt with uh, dealt with a, a collapsed lung. Ennis Cantor missed zero games. He missed a, he missed the second half of a game, and then they had a night off, and then he came back and played the next day. Um, so he he literally missed none. And uh, Terrence Jones, and this was back in 2015, but Terrence Jones, uh, Portland's own Terrence Jones, shout out to the Jefferson Democrats. Uh, but he he uh, missed about 10 days uh, with with a collapsed lung back in 2015. So those were like just like looking for. Um, NBA guys who had dealt with a similar injury, I think it, I think it's, we're not talking months, right? Like this isn't like, um, it, it's a scary thing and it sounds scary, but I think we're talking a couple weeks at the most, couple, 10 days at the most. So, um, we'll, we'll know more, but, um, it wouldn't be, I don't think it's like out of the question that CJ could be available as soon as next week in some games. Uh, it's, it's a growing list of, of injuries. Uh, Ben McLemore's on the injury list. Cody Zeller's on the injury list. Um, Nazir Little's on the injury list. Amphrey Simon's on the injury list. Uh, so is uh, Damian Lord. Like the Blazers need help. They they could use some bodies. It's it's a lot of names. Um, a lot of names on there. So um, we will see who plays. You know, um, Ant and Nas are are questionable. So they they got a 50-50 chance. Uh, Mclemore and and uh, and Cody Zeller probable. So they're more more much more likely to play, or twenty five percent more likely to play. But um, add CJ McCollum to that to to that injury report and. Like I said, just like a scary thing, you know. You think you have a rib contusion, and it's something much worse. Um, I'm glad the Blazers were able to find this because, again, I don't, I don't know the severity. But talking to people I know who are in the medical field, it's, it's more, um, just like in sport, in the sports world, uh, this isn't like a wild, a wildly uncommon thing. Although it, there are severe cases that are much scarier. So hopefully, CJ's isn't that severe, and he can get back to playing basketball, um, because it's what he loves to do, and the Blazers could use his help. Both, both are certainly true. Um, uh. This wasn't the only news of the day in Blazerland. Uh, if this was the only news of the day, we might have gone mailbag. But what a morning uh, here on the West Coast. If you live somewhere else, um, what an afternoon. Um, or I, I guess if you live in Australia, shout out to all my Australian listeners. Uh, what a what a middle of your night. Um, I guess like it was you know four or five a.m. when this when this news broke. But that's what you're used to in the NBA world. But um, Adrian Wojnarowski wrote a story for ESPN that detailed kind of the power plays and leverages that are maybe happening behind the scenes with Damian Lillard. And then Damian Lillard took exception to that, to the reporting, called him out specifically by name. My goodness, the Blazers. <laughs> um, they're, they, these, these, this group has a lot of just has has a lot of days that fill are filled with drama, and this one was no different. Um, so let's talk about what Woj wrote, uh, why Dame was presumably upset. Let's sort of unpack all of what happened to close out this show because um, Adrian Wojnarowski is the most powerful writer in the NBA world, and Damian Lord's beefing with him. Let's talk about the beef, but first let's talk about calm. Um, when it comes to athletes, we tend to focus on physical fitness and there's another side of the game that's just as important that's mental fitness and the calm and calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation and they've teamed up with lebron james to help you train your mind and become the champion version of yourself uh, lebron and calm know that your mind is like any muscle in your body you don't have but you don't have to be a world champion to learn how to train it calm can help you train your brain so you sleep better reduce your stress and perform at your best just like king james for lebron sleep is a critical part of his mental fitness routine so why don't you head over to calm.com slash locks and nba for a limited time and get 40 percent off your calm premium subscription because listen getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things you can do. Whether you're LeBron James, whether you're someone like pursuing a fifth NBA title, or you're just um, someone who needs to rest because they have a life, Calm can help. With Calm, you have access to nature scenes like rain on leaves and so much more like sleep stories and meditation so you can be ready for any challenge that life throws your way. So for a limited time, my listeners can join LeBron and using Calm and get a 40% discount on Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash locked on MBA. Unlock content to help you focus, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash locked on MBA. That's calm.com slash locked on NBA. Today's show is also brought to you by Built Bar. It's just the best tasting protein bar that there is. Um, 
I, I, I like to say usually that Bilt Bar doesn't have a lot of tricks, but they do have a lot of tricks. They have a ton of products uh, like Bilt Balls, which are the protein bars, but in like uh, two individual bite size balls or a couple bites if you're not taking huge chomps. Um, they're they're making they're just making delicious protein products. They got Built Boost, which is you can add to your drinks, add a little protein um, uh, and a little caffeine to your uh, to your beverages, flavored flavored uh, beverage additions. They've got Built Broth. It's bone broth brought to you by Built. They got all types of tricks. Um, so whatever you're into, um, for me, I'm a I'm a protein bar guy. Like I'm crushing these protein bars. I, I have been for I have been for a while. I'm gonna tell you about for, telling you about them for a while. My favorite flavor is. Uh, is peanut butter brownie. I also really like cookies and cream. Uh, mint brownie is pretty money too. But whatever your flavor is, you'll find something. Whatever your palate is, you'll find a flavor that meets that meets what you love. And you'll also just find protein bars that pack a punch. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 5 grams of net carbs. All tasty, all healthy. Go get yourself some. Go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. Get 15% off your next order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built dot com all right so we talked about cj mccollum's injury now we talk got to talk about beef beef at about 10 30 this morning adrian wojanowski of espn um the nba's biggest news breaker the NBA's biggest news broker, the most powerful person in NBA media in terms of um, like controlling the narrative, breaking news, all of these things like, um, you know, the the voice of sort of the voice and, and in some ways um, the face. I was going to say the face, but then I was picturing his his podcast logo, which is a little basketball with uh, with glasses on. But like one of the most powerful people in the league in terms of media, right? Like Woj is a Woj bomb is a thing. We know who he is. He has a nickname, Woj. Um, he's Adrian, I think is, is what he goes by in his real life. But like Woj wrote a story today at around 1030 in the morning. And there was a lot to unpack. The story was about the Blazers next, um, the hunt for their next GM candidate. And in many ways, it was about the hurdles that the GM candidate will have to navigate or have to get over. And those hurdles are all Damian Lillard and Damian Lillard's representation making power plays behind the scenes. Let's just, let's talk about what Woj's story says, and then we'll kind of unpack it. But let's, like, let's, I'm not even saying, like, let's take it at face value. Let's, let's just, un, let's just read the details out. Adrian Wojnarowski says that Lillard is interested in signing or, or is very much wants to sign, is, is, is interested in being given in July when he's eligible, a two-year, $107 million max, super max contract extension. That would be two years tacked on to um, the remaining, the end of his deal, which is, it runs through uh, 2024. So this would be the, or this, through 24, 25. So this would be 25, 26 and 26, 27, the end of that, the end of his deal. So those two years, two years, hundred million dollars it would be the largest um at, i mean it won't be by the time we get there right but it'll be at at the time if you were to sign it, it he would be it, he would be um the final year of that extension would be the largest single year salary in the history of the nba over 55 million dollars um this is like a negotiated and extended thing that if you are eligible for the supermax you can do this um damon lord by criteria of being all nba and um multiple seasons and and he's he's hit the he's hit the criteria for being eligible for the supermax this is kind of an unintended consequence of the supermax is that now dames he can get it and he wants it um players want to get paid um but and so it's so kind of Woj also details here's what dame wants here's the money he wants but in addition to sort of all of this, Damon Lord has is also made other power plays behind the scene, and one of them was um, getting Jason, wanting to get Jason Kidd as the head coach of uh, the Blazers, and that was like very out in the open. Um, you know, it was Chris Haynes reported the sort of um, the night that Terry Stotts got fired that Dame on the record, like Dame was on. It wasn't like sources or whatever. It was Dame's voice on the record in a Yahoo story written by Chris Haynes that uh, Jason Kidd is my guy. Later on that night, it was kind of softened, and Dame told the the Athletic, Shams Charania, and Jason Quick on the record that he preferred Jason Kidd and Chauncey Billups. But the first story that came out was Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd didn't get a sniff, didn't get an interview, all those things. So that was like the first leverage play that didn't work. You'll recall on this podcast that I, I, we. 
we read the tea leaves. We didn't need, um, we didn't need to wait for Adrian Wojnarowski here. It's just like, yeah, this is a power play. Like this is a, in some ways unprecedented. A star player saying, here's the guy I want. Here's the candidate I want. When the kind of list of candidates had already been leaked that, and didn't include Jason Kidd. It seemed at the time like a real power play from Dame and Wojnarowski details it here. I don't think you can gripe with that one. That's a real thing that happened and happened right in front of us in public. Um, that's that's real. Woj like Woj is reminding of us of a thing that happened. But um, some reporting behind the scenes that we that we don't know about from Woj is that he he suggests that Damon Lord made the uh, leverage play of of trying to get the team to trade CJ McCollum and four first round picks in exchange for Ben Simmons. That's a name. That's the name that is you know one of Dame's best friends on the team for a long time. Uh, you know his best friend on the team. Uh, they're still they still have a good relationship. I don't know if they're like super best pals. Um, but like. Because you know you just have a coworker for eight years, life, life, um, you know you grow up, whatever. Uh, but like they're they still have a very good relationship, friendly, talk regularly, all those things. Um, wanting, to, you know, some of it is like I want to trade for Ben Simmons. I think this is what you can uh, like. I want you to trade for Ben Simmons is like the Dame leverage play if you if you are to believe this reporting. And like, okay, well that means you have to trade CJ. So it wasn't like get CJ the hell out of here. It's like. I want to get Ben Simmons. It just follows, like the math follows that CJ has would have to be the guy. Um, in addition, Adrian Wojnarowski reports that Damian Lord and his camp, uh, that is the Goodwin Agency, are selling the idea to potential GM candidates or sort of like pushing the idea that the potential GM candidate should want to ship off the vets on the roster and rebuild this roster around Dame. So like, Roko gone, Nurk gone, CJ gone, and kind of reshape this roster and give it another shot with a new group and a, you know, a, a reshapen roster, the big swings that maybe Dame Lillard was calling for early in the summer around Dame. Um, you know, I, like whatever this means, the wording is kind of vague, but like Dame was, was, was pretty clear that he wanted roster changes this summer, like with his own voice in front of the microphone, um, you know, we're, we can't keep doing the same thing. We're not good enough. The Ross, if you know, we just lost in the first round to a team that was injured. Clearly the roster isn't good enough. Th those are like words from Dame's mouth. Um, I don't think this is, um, this is new info, right? Like that's not new info. It's, it's more specific. Um, and it's real reporting. And it's the idea that like Dame and his camp are like doing this. Um, you know, I guess the difference here, and we should, we should, um, uh, highlight this is like the, this is the idea that Dame and his camp are not like calling for it from the previous GM. They're saying whoever, whoever, and if there is, and the Blazers are very likely to replace Joe Cronin, the interim GM, whoever takes that job, this is what we want. This is the vision that you know, our group has. And Damon Lillard is the best player on the roster. And in, typically in NBA teams, um, if you don't like, completely acquiesce the best player in the roster, they have a great deal of input. Dame's had input in the past. Um, this is, this isn't like earth shattering stuff, but it's like putting it out there, right? It's putting it out there that Dame and his group are making these leverage plays. And then there's this line to close the, um, to close the, the story. It's, it's the second to last line um, in the kicker to use a real journalist term. There's like a joke that like journalists are always like, Oh, the kicker. Um, so I didn't want to do this, but like, Let's read the kicker real quick. Woj writes, the battle lines are real on Damian Lode's future and leverage is ever evolving. The battle lines, the battle lines, y'all. Um, so, so there's like a lot going on here. But the thing is, this is this is like a story about the next GM, but it's really a story about like Dame's power plays within the organization. And you know who didn't care for this characterization and who who said that this sounds like it comes directly from the viewpoint of departed former president of basketball operations, Neil Olshay? Damien Lord's representation. Damien Lord's agent straight up said it, said it online and then Dame had some beef online about it too. He wasn't particularly happy. Let's talk about the beef to close the show. Like we talked about what Woj reported, the implication from Dame's camp, not subtly, very specifically, is that this is information that is parroting Neil Olshay. The beef is real. Let's talk about the beef to close the show. Before, before we get there, let's talk about betonline.ag. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action, whatever sports action that is. Basketball, football, boxing, hockey, soccer, 
combat sports, you want to play your favorite Vegas casino games, it's all there on Bet Online. They got a new and updated website, new and updated interface. You can visit it on your mobile device, you can visit it on your desktop. And while you're there, you can put in the promo code locked on, you'll get a 50% welcome bonus when you are making your first deposit. They've got props and odds and lines on all games, all se- whatever season, all season long. Um, it's it's just the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports. So don't wait. Go go take advantage of this deal today. That's lo- the promo code is locked on. You'll get a 50% welcome bonus. That's bet online where the game starts. Still a pass first point guard, still Mike Richmond. You're still listening to Locked on Blazers. Woohoo! That beef, that beef is simmering. Um, Adrian Wojnarowski at 10:30 a.m. writes a story that implicates Damian Lord as a um, as a dude making power plays behind the scenes, making leverage plays, and drawing battle lines about his future, wanting a hundred million dollar contract extension after his 35th birthday, and wanting basically um, you know carte blanche to ha- to have the the um, have the franchise built around his desires and his skills. Now. This isn't that uncommon in the world. Like the specifics of it are uncommon and maybe hearing the specifics are uncommon, but like, yeah, NBA teams build around their stars and stars have a ton of power. It's a stars league and it's a player's league. This is, this is, this is not that surprising, but, but the, the sort of problem here, the, the, where the beef here happened or where the drama here happened is that Adrian Wojnarowski's um, reporting at least according to people in Damon Lord's camp, sounds like it is parroting the words and the opinions of Neil Olshay, the former Blazers president of basketball operations who was just ousted. Um, and in fact, uh, one of Damon Lord's agents on Twitter wrote the following, for those that know, there's one guy in the entire organization that refused to turn on a guy that was mediocre at his job and that most there despised. He returns the favor by trying to blame the most loyal slash real dude on his pl- on the planet on his way out. Terrible. But it tracks with a history of not being able to own up to mistakes and be held accountable both publicly and privately. That is one of Dame's agents, one of Dame's representatives coming for it. Coming, you know, um, calling out Woj for parroting Neil Olshay's uh Neil Olshay's tweets, or Neil Olshay's tweets, calling out Woj for parroting Neil Olshay's voice for for having a sort of one-sided report and all this. This is, re- that is, um, I, I don't know if this is, I, I don't like if this is unprecedented, but this is rare. This is a rare thing, um, particularly from the, what, you know, from an, a player agent or um, someone who reps someone online to do it, to do someone who reps someone to act this, this, um, this specifically and this um, with that type of vitriol and that type of um, that sort of that type of barb, that type of pointedness on in a public space like Twitter, like this would w- taking taking to the Internet about, an, uh, you know, 35 minutes, 45 minutes after this um, story came out and and saying like, nah. This, you know, who told you, you know, that you let this guy trash Dame. How dare you? That's terrible. But that wasn't the only person who had beef. In fact, Dame came out, quote tweeted someone. Um, and I don't want to get too deep into Twitter, really, because um, I know it's like super niche um, and kind of not real life. I, I totally agree that. But like, this is the place where we hear these people's voices. Um, and so I feel like if you're not a Twitter user, um, kind of mailbag if you're not a twitter user someone who doesn't tweet good for you like st- stay away um i'll just bring it to you um then you can find it in other places the news will come to you um in other places without being on that hell site but it is a wonderful news aggregator and it is a place where you can see the nba drama but um uh, a twitter user wells p if you're into it at wells underscore p tweeted out a photo of Donald Trump and Mike Pence talking to one another. It's the caption says, Woj and Olshay after writing that article slandering Dame. And Damon Lillard quote tweeted that, which is like you, you, you know, share that tweet with a little caption above it. And the caption above it, the quote tweet above it says, from Damon Lillard, can't say I'm surprised. Beef, beef. Beef, beef, beef. There's that is it is simmering, y'all. Um, this, 
this comes on the heels of um, on Monday morning, Sam Amick and Shams Trania wrote a story that said Damon Lord had sort of like um, was frustrated with his role in Chauncey Billups's offense and frustra frustrated with like the way he was being utilized and, and Billups's coaching. Um, and Dame kind of called out uh, Tarania and Sam Amick for their reporting. Now he's calling out Woj like much more specifically and by name um, than he did with with um, Tarania and uh, and Amick. But he still like this is back to back days that reporting from the largest newsbreakers and the largest voices in um, in in the NBA media space have reported that there's sort of like um, bad news. The the like drama behind the scenes with Damian Lord in the organization. He's you know he's kind of not feuding with his coach, but like not totally happy with the way his, the new coach is coaching. And like, this wasn't his first choice and all that. And now there's like, Dame is like trying to, you know, s sign a hundred million dollar contract extension and um, it, trade everyone away and blah, 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 blah. And like, this is, and, and Dame is back to back days beefing with these people. Like I'm not, Dame is free to say like, Hey, this mischaracterizes like how I feel and what actually happened. Or this is like, this is parroting like uh, the opinions of, of someone who no longer works for the team, a former executive, like, you know, F out of here. But like, <laughs> to some extent, and I mean this earnestly and honestly, where there's smoke, there's fire. Both of these people like Woj and Shams, they do what they do. Like they do their thing. And I'm not, um, it takes a lot of, skill and a lot of um, hard work to to get people to trust you with news right to get people to 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 give you this information there's a reason they are who they are um so like without even like casting a sort of a value judgment on that um that's a whole nother show is kind of like the world of of nba journalism but um like it, there's it doesn't just, it's not just total, um, it didn't come out of nowhere. Like we said, like when I unpack some of the Woj story, like some of it we've just like seen right in front of us. There, there is, this isn't like new stuff or fake stuff. This is like stuff we've heard Damien Lord say. Um, this is just like, um, oh yeah, in addition to the stuff he said right in front of your face, there's also some other sort of stuff behind there. Um, whether it's like fair or balanced or reasonable or whatever is like another thing, but like some of it is just like straight up real. And with the Choms and uh, Amic stuff, like, some of it is just probably straight up real. Um, and Dame doesn't like, he does, probably just doesn't like it being out there. Um, that's, we're at a strange place. While the Blazers have lost two executives six weeks into the season and their uh, star player is, you know, struggling through an injury and beefing on the internet with um, the major news brokers of the league. This is just a messy world that they've arrived at. Uh, I don't like, I don't feel the necessary. I don't feel the need to pick a side here, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do to close the show is to say like, Team Dame, get them. But like, I earnestly don't feel that way. I, I feel like um, this is just continuing the hilarious and messy world that had the Blazers have been in. They've been in this since June, since they fired Terry Stotts. Um, you know, maybe even before that, as they were crumbling against the injured Nuggets. Uh, they, they're just where they've been. It's where they've been. And they've been in every um, every way. You know, firing a coach, uh, a messy hire to hire the new coach, uh, uh, reportedly some like... Um, Game of Thrones, who gets, who's in charge struggling between the top two executives, um, or at least like who gets to be the face of the face of the franchise with the top two executives, both of those two executives, one quit abruptly, the other one fired amid an, amid an investigation. And now the, there, there are multiple reports from multiple sources about sort of Dame, uh, un, maybe un, unrest behind the scenes and what he's got sort of the strings being pulled behind the scenes. And Dame Lord is actively beefing with reports reporters that have reported this news saying that MFers love drama and saying that he's not not surprised by the way that Woj and um whoever you know the implied source Neil Olshay for at least from Dame's camp um here is like it is acting like this is um these are choppy waters I don't <laughs> like I don't I don't think there's a way to say like um like the Blazers for so long relied on stability, the stability of Stotts and the stability of Dame and the stability of, um, of, uh, Neil Olshay and, and that, and that trio together in, in the various sort of elements that make up a basketball team, right? P players, coaches, and front office, um, that's gone. And it is, and, and what has 
like as that has sort of gone to dust, what remains is just Damian Lord and a really, really messy situation. Whatever's next is is just more a little bit of drama, right? Like, and I think whatever's next is fair. And I think like, not like whatever's next is fair, duh. Like life is is kind of just plays out that way. But like whatever's next is, you know, um, Dame, maybe you're maybe not getting this extension or maybe that's like, um, maybe by the time we get to July, the, the like him needing $100 million after his 35th birthday or wanting $100 million after his 35th birthday won't be a thing. Like like things will have changed so drastically. But, um, you know, the, the roster is going to change over the next few months. Uh, and they also might hire a new GM over the next couple months. And that GM is going to want to know like what the deal is with ownership. Like, are they sticking around or are they selling this team? And, and that GM is going to want to know, do I have carte blanche to kind of do what, what I see fit as the best move with this roster? Or do I have to kind of figure out this is what Dame wants and match there, right? And figure out both kind of align both things. One of the things Woj wrote in that story is that GMs would answer to not Dame's camp, but ownership. Um, I, I imagine Dame's camp felt a little um, like that was an unwarranted shot across the bow. Um, it's just messy. Like there's, there's not a generous read that suggests things are good. Um, I, I'm looking for some positivity somewhere. Uh, I think we're gonna have to bring back Moment of Joy this week. I plan on bringing back some Blazers Moments of Joy this week because we we, we need it, dear listeners. It's it's just been a messy time and this was a messy a messy day in a messy week, in a messy month, in a messy year uh, for the Portland Trail Blazers. A messy, there's been a messy last six months. They're, and they remain drama-filled. Drama um, they're acting up. Everybody's acting up and acting out. Uh, if nothing else, it is, um, there's a lot there, uh, as I joked with my friend Chuck, who, uh, is an occasional listener of this podcast and, a, and an always friend is that like, at least there's a lot of content. <laughs> at least I didn't have to struggle for what I was going to talk about in today's show. Um, you know, other teams that are maybe 11 and 14, you don't know what you're going to talk about, but not with the Blazers, the gift that keeps on giving, um, they're going to play basketball tomorrow. Some of them. Uh, we'll see who. The injury report is going to be a big deal tomorrow. You know, no Dame, no CJ. Uh, probably, you know, maybe Ant, maybe Nas will be in there. But, like, uh, we'll, we'll, we will see. Um, the injury report is going to be a big thing to follow, whether Ben McLemore and Cody Zeller is, are, are going to be available and all that. Like, um, this this team just doesn't – they need bodies. They don't have a, they don't have a, a ton of folks. Um available and they're playing the best team in the NBA. Uh, so it could be a challenging one. So we will recap that game and on uh, that show will be in your feed on Thursday. Friday show, we'll have Jason Quick join the podcast. Uh, we'll talk about everything, <laughs> everything that's gone on in a, in a busy, a busy week. Um, a week ago, they fired Neil Olshay, and look where we are now. Uh, not even a week ago; it's Tuesday. Four, four days ago, they fired Neil Olshay. Uh, look where they are now. It's uh, there's a lot going on. So, if there's a lot going on, this is the place to to kind of hear it dissected and consider it. Um, and in normal times, you know, send in a question so I can answer it in the mailbag. But uh, we will, you know, there'll be more more coming this week. More good shows, recap of a game, and we'll talk about uh, whatever's happening with that one and an interview with Jason Quick. You won't want to miss it. So subscribe to the channel on, or subscribe to the the podcast on our YouTube channel. Help us get to two thousand subscribers by twenty twenty two. That's two thousand subscribers by New Year's. Tell your friends about this podcast. They can find it wherever they get podcasts, and also on YouTube. Just search Locked On Blazers. Find us there waiting for them. Appreciate you listening. Talk to you soon.